Hi, it's Katrina. From mysterious civilizations with incredible artwork to kingdoms with far-reaching trade routes, here are 10 lost empires of Africa you didn't know about. Number 10. The Land of Punt Historical accounts of Punt, one of the most mysterious ancient African civilizations, date back to around 2500 BC. The Egyptians, who at one point viewed Punt as their place of origin, called it the Land of the Gods and admired its rich resources, including ebony, gold, myrrh, plants, and exotic animals. The two societies traded extensively for over a thousand years, most famously during the 15th century BC, during the reign of Queen Hatshepsut, and the last known expedition to Punt occurred during the 12th century BC. Despite evidence left behind of Punt's existence and importance as a center of commerce, modern scholars can't seem to agree on where the trading empire was located. Some scholars believe Punt was situated on East Africa's Red Sea coast, while others have suggested the Arabian Peninsula and the Levant. Meanwhile, the ancient history encyclopedia cites modern-day Somalia as Punt's most likely location. None of these theories, which are based largely on ancient Egyptian inscriptions and artifacts of Punt origin found among Egyptian ruins, have been proven. Elements of ancient Egyptian culture are evident today in the Puntland state of Somalia's language and customs, serving as a sign that the land of Punt was located in the region. But without tangible evidence, nobody can say with certainty that they know where the empire was. Number 9. The Nok Culture One of West Africa's earliest known societies, the Nok Culture, existed in modern-day Nigeria from around 500 BC to the 2nd century AD. The Nok were known for their distinctive terracotta sculptures of human heads and figures, which have been unearthed across a vast 30,116 square mile area. They also had impressive early iron smelting technology. Archaeologists have found evidence of ironworking in the region dating back to the 4th century BC in the form of 13 iron smelting furnaces that were unearthed in the village of Taruga, as well as iron tools and weapons. To this day, however, the Nok are mostly a mystery to experts who know very little about their origins, identity, social structure, and other elements of their culture, as well as what led to its downfall. They were clearly an agricultural society with a manufacturing sector of sorts, and their artwork may have influenced later civilizations, but that's the extent of what researchers seem to know. Number 8. Alwa the medieval Nubian kingdom of Alwa, also called Alodia, was situated in what is now central and southern Sudan. Out of three medieval Nubian kingdoms that existed, Alwa is the least studied, and only its capital, Soba, has been thoroughly excavated out of numerous known sites relating to the empire. Soba occupied roughly one square mile area and was described by author Mohi Eldin Abdallah Zarug as a town of extensive dwellings and churches full of gold and gardens. Archaeologists surmise that the capital may have once supported a population of 30,000. It was a wealthy urban center containing around 25 churches, including what researchers believe was the last Egyptian-style temple ever built. Evidence suggests that the kingdom dates back to the 6th century and flourished for nearly 1,000 years until it fell to Islam in the early 16th century. Alwa was founded as a Christian state sometime after the Kush kingdom fell in 350 AD, first appearing in the historical record in the year 569, although the exact nature of its origins is unknown. The empire peaked sometime after the 9th century and its heyday lasted possibly until the 12th century, after which point it fell into decline. Numerous factors may have contributed to Alwa's downfall, possibly including invasions from other empires, drought, shifting trade routes, plague, and migration. Number 7. Aksum The ancient East African kingdom of Aksum, also called the Aksumite Empire, formed around 80 BC in what are now northern Ethiopia and Eritrea. Little is known about its origins. Centered around the historical capital city of Aksum, the empire rose to prominence in the 1st century, becoming a major player in the gold and ivory trades. The kingdom was a naval and trading power that extended across modern-day Eritrea, Ethiopia, Djibouti, Somalia, Yemen, and parts of Sudan. It converted from polytheism to Christianity during the 4th century, thereafter becoming the first state to use images of the cross on its coinage. 
Unlike Christian Europe, the Kingdom of Aksum maintained positive relations with rising Islamic powers, even providing shelter to Muhammad's early followers in 615. Nevertheless, the empire declined in the face of Islamic expansion, and in the early 7th century, the kingdom stopped minting coins, abandoned Aksum, and sought the safety of higher grounds as invading tribes encroached on its territory. The Aksumite Empire ruled the region until 825 AD, before ultimately falling during the 10th century, with the circumstances of its final defeat remaining somewhat obscure even today. During the 11th or 12th century, the Zagwe dynasty succeeded the kingdom of Aksum. Despite the empire's fall, its cultural legacy lived on, especially in the architectural styles adopted by the Zagwe dynasty. Number 6. Benin the very beginnings of the Kingdom of Benin started during the 10th century, when the Edo people cleared settlements in the rainforest of West Africa in what is now Nigeria. Originally, they lived in small family groups, which eventually came together to form a kingdom called Igo Domigodo. During the 12th century, the leaders of Igo Domigodo lost their power, so the Edo people sought help from a neighboring society, ruled by the King of Aif. The king sent help in the form of his grandson, Eweka, who became the first Oba, or King, of Benin. The kingdom of Benin peaked during the 15th century, when it reached its greatest size and power under Oba Eware the Great. It established its foothold in the trade network as a purveyor of gold, ivory, and pepper, and was also well known for its sculptures and other artwork. On the darker side of the Kingdom of Benin's history is its participation in the West African slave trade, procuring humans from rival tribes and selling them to Americans and Europeans who comprised the demand for compulsory labor. The empire's power began waning during the 19th century due to infighting among royals for access to the throne, which gave way to civil wars and had a weakening effect on the society's ability to resist invasions from outsiders. In 1897, Britain invaded Benin and burned its capital city to the ground, seizing control of the region and incorporating it into British Nigeria. While that spelled the end for the Kingdom of Benin, the Oba still serves in Benin City as a governmental advisor. Number 5. Zimbabwe A series of stone ruins located in modern-day Mazvingo in central Zimbabwe represent the former capital of the fallen Kingdom of Zimbabwe, a Bantu-speaking Shona empire that thrived during southern Africa's late Iron Age. The city was first inhabited during the 11th century and thrived between the 13th and 15th centuries, reaching a population of around 20,000 at its peak. During this time, the kingdom ruled over parts of Botswana, Zimbabwe, and Mozambique. Archaeologists have found pottery and other artifacts from places like China and Persia among the Great Zimbabwe Ruins, speaking to the empire's participation in a vast trading network. Besides being located among a major trade route, the Kingdom of Zimbabwe was rich in cattle and precious metals. Despite the society's apparent wealth, Great Zimbabwe eventually went into decline and was abandoned around 1450 for unknown reasons. Possible factors include the depletion of nearby gold deposits and competition from rival empires. The Shona people migrated northward and formed a new kingdom called Mutapa. Archaeological excavations at the site have been extremely limited, with just an estimated 2% of the vast city being unearthed so far. Assuming the digs continue, future discoveries could offer deeper insight into the kingdom of Zimbabwe's rise and fall, as well as what everyday life was like in its capital. Number 4. Mapungubwe One of the kingdoms that eventually contributed to the formation of the kingdom of Zimbabwe was that of Mapungubwe. Located south of Great Zimbabwe, the city of Mapungubwe was situated along the borders of modern-day South Africa, Zimbabwe, and Botswana. It served as the center of what was once the South African subcontinent's largest kingdom, thriving as a major trading hub between the 13th and 14th centuries. Mapungubwe was best known for its gold and ivory, with Egypt, India, and China among its top trading partners. The settlement's ruins were rediscovered in 1932, but news of the findings was kept rather hush-hush until 1994, presumably to avoid the disclosure of evidence that advanced civilizations existed in Africa before European colonizers arrived. Mapungubwe left behind no written record, leaving the remains of its buildings to speak for the society's culture, beliefs, and day-to-day -day lives. Archaeologists point toward the ruins as the first known evidence of a class-based society in southern Africa. In other words, a civilization with clear distinctions between its ruling class and populace. 
For the commoners, life was largely agriculture-based. The society was also tight-knit and family-oriented, as evidenced by structures left behind that appear to have social and household functions. The oldest buildings at the site date back to the 11th century and suggest that Mapungubwe's inhabitants moved to the site from Bamba Dayanalo, an adjacent sister settlement bearing signs of even earlier occupation. It appears as though the residents of Bamba Dayanalo moved to Mapungubwe when the town became overcrowded around the year 1045. Mapungubwe's inhabitants appear to have abandoned their settlement during the 15th century for reasons that remain unknown to this day. One prevailing theory is that climate change made it difficult to raise crops, prompting the residents to relocate elsewhere. Number 3. Congo From the 14th to the 19th centuries, the Kingdom of Congo, with a K, operated as an independent state, occupying an area on Central Africa's western coast that now includes parts of modern-day Angola and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. While its origins are somewhat obscure, the civilization was wildly successful, consisting of around 2 million people at its peak. The arrival of Portuguese traders in the 15th century provided a major boost to Congo's economy, which profited heavily from the regional copper, ivory, salt, cattle hide, and slave trades. Not surprisingly, the Portuguese expanded the slave trade, but the friendliness between the European power and the Congo was short-lived. Relations deteriorated starting in the 17th century amid repeated attempts at Portuguese dominance over Congo, as well as civil wars and strife with neighboring kingdoms, ultimately leading to the Kingdom of Congo's collapse in the early 18th century. The empire lived on in name into the 19th century thanks to Portuguese backing, but had lost much of its power, making its title relatively meaningless from there on out. During the 19th century scramble for Africa between European powers, the Kingdom of Congo was divided between France, Portugal, and Belgium. Today, the kingdom's legacy lives on as the Democratic Republic of Congo, which represents the Belgian portion, the Republic of Congo, which went to the French, and Angola, which the Portuguese took. Number 2. Mali In the year 1240, a Malinke prince named Sundiata Keita founded the Mali Empire in West Africa. It eventually became Africa's largest kingdom, thanks to Sundiata's policies, including a centralized government, a well-trained military, and diplomacy. The Mali Empire gained further power during the 14th century under Mansa Musa I, who vastly expanded the kingdom's territory, wealth, and culture. At its peak, Mali controlled regional trade routes, taking full advantage of the gold, salt, copper, ivory, and slave trades that crossed through its territory. The city of Timbuktu, which served as a major trading hub and learning center, is perhaps the most well-known surviving remnant of the Mali Empire. After converting to Islam under the influence of Muslim merchants, Mali's rulers used Timbuktu as a place to spread their new religion. The Mali Empire collapsed during the 1460s amid civil war, new trade routes opening up, and competition from other kingdoms, including the neighboring Songhai Empire. Around 1600, the Mali Kingdom broke up into smaller societies. Number 1. Songhai The Songhai Empire rose to power during the Kingdom of Mali's decline in the late 14th century, eventually seizing Timbuktu, the region's largest city, under a military commander named Sunni Ali Bear, who became the first Songhai king. From there, the Songhai Empire expanded, occupying more major cities and taking control of various trade routes across the Sahara Desert. The Songhai Empire grew even more powerful under Muhammad Ture, a devout Muslim who built schools, imposed Sharia law, and strengthened the kingdom's cultural and political ties with other Muslim societies. A period of peace and stability followed over a series of emperors until civil war broke out in 1591. Sensing the instability, Moroccan Sultan Ahmad al-Mansur Sadi saw the perfect opportunity to invade the Songhai Empire. In hopes of establishing power in the region and gaining control over the area's gold fields, Al-Mansur sent an army to Songhai. The Moroccan army had a relatively easy time subduing Songhai, but governing such a vast region proved to be a drain on its resources and manpower, and controlling the gold mines was nearly impossible. In 1661, the Moroccans withdrew from Songhai, but the damage was done, and the weakened empire never re-established itself, despite repeated attempts to restore old traditions, and broke up into 12 smaller kingdoms. The French snuffed out any remnants of the Songhai Empire's former glory when it conquered the region in 1901. 
Thanks for watching! Which empire was your favorite? What other ancient empires would you like to learn about? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already! See you next time! Bye!